Welcome to the city of Portage La Prairie, Manitoba, for Shaw TV's live coverage of the 2015 Canadiens Men's Classic. This event is part of the World Curling Tour and is proudly sponsored by Canadiens. Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Mike Valente. Welcome to Portage La Prairie. We have a great matchup for you this evening. Kevin Cooey's team is going to be taking on Reed Carruthers' team. Kevin, originally from Yellowknife, now residing in Calgary, representing the Glencoe Club. He has four Grand Slam titles under his belt in his career, currently ranked number three. His opponent, Reed Carruthers, originally from Winnipeg, Manitoba, has one Grand Slam victory under his belt and is currently ranked number four. So it's number four versus number three, and the two that will call tonight's game. Here's Mike Beauregard and Kathy Goche. Guys? Kathy, this is the biggest event on the World Curling Tour so far this season, a $60,000 purse, and consequently it's attracted a really good field, as it always does. It really always does, and what we've seen over the last couple of years is the international teams are making Portage a stop, which is really great, not only for them, but for us as spectators. Now, I'm excited about our uh, featured match here at 5 o'clock on, on the Sunday. Uh, sometimes it isn't... Uh, you know what you would call a marquee event but it is today it features Kevin Cooey a former world champion up against our provincial champion Reed Carruthers uh, the winner advances to the playoffs well and both of them are having a good year so we're expecting some really great curling this is a B event qualifier so loser does have a chance but you never want to put yourself in that position and you look at Kevin Cooey a team who is relatively new, lots of old bodies, if you will, but he made the decision at the Worlds a couple of years ago that this is the team that he would have the best chance at the Olympics for. That was a bit of a training year last year. People are expecting big things this year. Eight teams make the playoffs. Two are already in. Stephen Laycock of Saskatchewan and Brad Jacobs of Ontario. Mike McEwen, who's won this event four times in the last five years, won't make the playoffs. No, and I think that, uh, you know, it's been a bit of an unsettling week or two, and you and I will talk about it during the show, about the whole broom saga and switching heads and, and the players getting together and deciding that there is, it's challenging the integrity of the sport. And so McEwen's team is the team that has used the brooms the longest. That may have played in at the minimum into your psyche of not being sure what your broom will do. All right, we'll be back with our featured match in just a moment. You're watching the Canad Inns Men's Classic from Portage on Shaw TV. At Shaw TV, we are proud to bring you live events and we value your comments. Call the Shaw TV viewer response line now, 204-480-3500, or email us, shawtvwinnipeg at shaw.ca, and let us know how we're doing. Or find us on Facebook and Twitter at Shaw TV Winnipeg. Welcome back to the Portage Curling Club and the 2015 edition of the Canadiens Men's Classic. Mike Beauregard, Kathy Gauthier, Mike Valente, and our Shaw crew set to uh, feature a B event final featuring Kevin Cooey, a decorated Canadian curler who needs no introduction in his rink. And just about every name there, Kathy, is... Uh, recognizable to uh, the Canadian curling fan. Well, they sure are. Mark and Ben, of course, uh, long-time members of that dynasty, skipped by Kevin Martin, Brent Lang, coming over from Ontario and Glenn Howard's team. And so it is a real interesting mix. And these are the three, as we talked about earlier, that Kevin really did feel that looking forward to the next Olympic trials process and qualification for the next Olympics that he would have the best chance with. And so we're looking for big things from this team this year for sure. Cooey is taking on our provincial champion here in Manitoba, Reed Crothers, who decided last year to skip his own rank and had uh, quite a bit of success. Beat Mike McEwen twice at the old Safeway Championship in Brandon and uh, went to his first briar as a skip. Well, and for Reed, who's the gentleman on the far right in the cap, in case you're not familiar with Reed, longtime junior skip, very successful, skipped in the beginning of men's, but like many uh, really great players do decide that it's not about the position. It really is about getting on a team with a winning combination. Did that with Jeff Stoughton and had tremendous results, but really felt it was uh, it was time when that change was made to go back to the helm and broke through last year. And so this team is looking for some great things this year as well. Well, we started this event with 32 teams. We'll be down to eight 
at the end of today. Eight make tomorrow's playoffs. Two are already in, as we mentioned in our opening, Stephen Laycock and Brad Jacobs. And the winner of this Cooey Carruthers match will get an automatic berth as well. The other B event final going on right now pits the defending world champion, Nicholas Hedin, up against Charlie Thomas of the Glencoe Curling Club in Calgary. Thomas uh, took out Mike McEwen, if, if you just missed it. Uh, McEwen, who had won back-to-back -back titles here in Portage, uh, lost three consecutive games and has been eliminated. And Charlie Thomas is a great player. Uh, this is a gentleman who was at the Worlds in Sochi last year representing Canada in the mixed doubles and has really looked, uh, he and Kalen Park, as uh, a twosome that now that the mixed doubles is an Olympic sport officially at the next games is, is probably Canada's best representative. Other teams will be now trying to really learn the mixed double where those two have really been studying it and studying the European success for the last couple of years. So not a not a huge surprise. Uh, you know, you may not be familiar, familiar with Charlie's name, but he's a very accomplished men's curler, junior men's curler, and certainly mixed doubles curler. Just watching the teams in their warm-up as they go up and down. Mark Kennedy, longtime front-end player, moved up to third last year for Kevin. Doing their draws to the button. Reed Carruthers' team did practice first, and Reed put it on the pin, and so there will be some pressure for sure on Team Cooey to make a very good draw if they want to attempt to have Hammer here in this first end. Outside of Mike McEwen, Cooey uh, is the only skip to win this event in the last five years. McEwen had won four of the last five, and Kevin won back in uh, 2012 with his old ring. We certainly have had a dynasty at this event in Portage. This is actually uh, a rematch of yes. an A event game won by Crothers, who then lost to Jacobs in the A event final. Kevin started with Winnipeg or Rob Atkins, then he went on to Brown, and then he did lose to Carruthers, as you just said, and then he dropped back a game, beat Lyburn, and triumphed over Manitoba former junior champion and Canadian champion from two years ago, Matt Dunstone in an extra end, and that has put him in this game. There's a good look at the Portage Curling Club. I was talking to Willie Lyburn earlier and he said it was significantly colder out there today than it was yesterday. So it's changed the ice a bit. Well, and I think that they were anticipating a little bit the warmth as we look at the other matchups tonight, Mike. Yes, we've got a, a couple of uh, C event semifinals on the ice as well. We've got uh, Willie Lyburn facing Jeff Hartung and Brock Virtue up against Craig Brown. So we'll keep you updated on all of those games, those C event semis and our two B event finals. We'll be back on the air tonight at 8.30 with uh, the C event finals where four more rinks will qualify for the playoffs tomorrow, the final four. And if you have the day off tomorrow. If you're lucky enough, you can come down here. Or you could develop a very bad cold overnight. It's been known to <laughs> happen. Make your way down, see some great curling. Kathy can forge Same the line. doctor's note. <laughs> yes, Might have I a can. little more room, but it's good. And we'll have three draws tomorrow, 10 a.m. The semifinals will be at 2 o'clock, and the final, the championship the final, at 6 p.m. And if you can't make it down here, if the boss uh, doesn't approve of the doctor's note. You can catch the game on Shaw TV, 6 o'clock tomorrow night, our championship final, and we'll have a new champion this year. And so that was his final practice draw. So as Kevin makes his way down, this now is the official draw to the button for Team Kevin Cooey. And just a quick comment as we look across the ice and the other teams practicing on the far side on sheet two, Brad Jacobs' team is out throwing some rocks. The teams that qualify through A are given the opportunity because they do play less games than others to practice. 
just so that they stay very familiar with the ice and the conditions. A little less. Hey, line's good. Line's good, no, line's good. Line's good. Line's good. Line's perfect. Line's perfect. Get a room. No, line's good. Line's perfect. Hard, 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 hard. Easy. Sorry, I almost killed you there. And so now they will draw again. As I mentioned earlier, Reed put his right on the pin. And so now you go down and you have another player on your team throw. It looks like it will be Mark Kennedy. And you would continue to go through the entire order of the team until somebody beats each other up. <laughs> we saw that at the Briar last year. In one case, went through the lineup almost twice completely before somebody outdrew another. And that just shows how good these players are at finding draw weight and keeping it. Also speaks volumes to how good the ice conditions are here in Portage. Heads up, guys, heads up, heads Lean up. It. Lean heads it. up, your line's perfect. Just need heads a up. piece of the floor. Yeah, can't hurt it. Can't hurt it. Can't hurt it. Good sweep, guys, that work. Good scrubbing, bud. And so that beats the second stone thrown by Team Carruthers. So last rock advantage will go to Kevin Cooey in this first end. The Cooey rink coming off a victory uh, last week on the World Curling Tour. They won the direct horizontal drilling fall classic. And isn't that a mouthful? Those aren't words that you put together very comfortably, my uh, friend. I believe mouthful. that's Saskatoon, is it not? A uh, pretty decent paycheck, too. And a tough field, always. The Cooey Rink second on the World Curling Tour money list with $38,500 in earnings. Brad Gushu way ahead with almost 60000 in the bank. Brad and his team started early. They went overseas a couple of times where there were events, have really put a lot of time already into this sport, given it's only the second week of October. Yeah, they've already won three times. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what the teams are waiting for. Perhaps just waiting a, for a signal or a cue from us, which they've been given. And we're underway. There's the lead for Reed Crothers Rink. Colin Hodgson. Mine's good. Colin is actually a Wolf chef by trade. You'll see that leaf on their collar. I think as with many curlers, with the amount of travel that's involved, it's pretty hard to keep a job at a restaurant and say I'm your chef three days a week, or no, I'm sorry, I can't come in because I'm working. And so for Colin, he got into the clothing business as the CEO of Dynasty Curling, and that's the jacket manufacturer, the jacket design that this team is wearing. A lot of teams on the circuit this year going with that company. Always nice to see a curler put some investment in the sport Whoa. see that emblem on the collar there's the lead stone from ben hebert normal colin may have the best hair out here as well good normal clean I don't know. Benny Heaps might argue with you. Good. Good. 
Yep. Ben Hebert, a long time resident of Saskatchewan. It's where he hails from. We saw him with a number of teams over the years from Saskatchewan before he moved to the Alberta field to play with Kevin Martin for many years and has stayed in that area. I was so excited last year at the Briar to be able to play at home and not to have to travel. And it, all those things do take a lot out of you. And so for the Carruthers team, even though they live in Winnipeg, this is such a nice short drive down the highway for them. It's coming into the event and going home when you're really yep. tired. It's just so nice not Our to have to worry go. about two airplanes and are they going to be on time mm -hmm. and all of those sorts of things. In the second stones now, here's the first from Derek Samogolski. The event final here at the Canad Inns Men's Classic. The other final on the ice pits Nicholas Sedin, defending world champion of Sweden. Easy, against easy. Charlie Thomas. Brent and Jennifer Jones got married this summer. Or and so very much a curling like family. Normal. That way it was good. Clean. Clean. Wall Braden. Good. And you can expect that this will be the only end that we will see this way. Both teams just loosening up and wanting to not take a whole lot of risk. But you can expect that they will come out barrels blazing in end number two. Yeah. And a good chance for us to also see what the ice does. Very straight. They're taking middle of the rock with the in turn. Yep. Yep. Wanting to make sure they roll a little bit so that it rolls into the house. I see. That's the biggest difference this year. When this team first got together, the decision was because Ben and Mark had swept together for so many years and were so good at judging and their communication that Brent Lang would hold the broom in the house and so that that tandem would not be changed. But there was a lot of running up and down the ice and a lot more discussions Normal. than perhaps yeah. was necessary. And that eats away at your time clock. So there's nothing wrong with Brent Lang as a sweeper and they decided to go with the more traditional where your front end sweeps and Mark is in the house the entire time. Clean. Clean, Derek. Clean. Clean. Yep. 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 Right up. Right up. Good. Last of the third stones, first end. Yep, pick hard, 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 go, 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 go. Fuck off. I have a feeling that it picked up some sort of debris. Fourteen, I think, is your good speed for here. Talking about the ice times earlier, I was here for the earlier draw, and it was closer to 13 and a half, which would be a little bit slow for typically uh, the portage ice, but it was 14, 14 and a bit when they were throwing their draws to the button earlier, so showing that the ice conditions are very quick. Very nice. Just 
puppy. Top eight, guys. Into looks skip like stones now, the first for Reed Crothers. Cooey yeah, with the head. Like it's pretty heavy, just top eight. Looks, looks like a lot. Wanting to make sure they're very staggered, respecting that upweight ability of Kevin Cooey to make okay, multiple so stones go away. Right here, then. No, no, never Tom. Good, good job. Time hog to stop. That's 26 and a half on my watch. Yeah, there hasn't been a lot down this line. I got 13.89 on this go, and that's a fresh spot, so it should be close. So a bit of change of tactics for Kevin Cooey. Was hoping to blank this opening end just to get a feel of it, but that miss by Mark Kennedy, whether it was a pick or some sort of debris on the ice, has changed the circumstances. Knows that with those two like in the you house is not that. interested in being forced, and so trying to play the freeze onto that stone on the left-hand side as you look at it. Find a way to score two. Line's good, we got room, room and line's room. good. Little bit of room. Line's real good. Make sure we're two room. Room. Okay, it's definitely got to curl a little. Brett's in. Get it Make there, sure line's good. Got to curl though. Got to get there. Got to get there. Whoa. Yep, 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 yep. Come on, Eddie. Go, go. Pretty good shot. There was not that much? I, I think so. Okay. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah. Just fine. Yeah. What are they looking at here, Kathy? Well, because they're staggered a little bit, opportunity for Reed to hit just off nose and try to move them both out of there. Last stone for Reed Crothers, first end. Looks like he's playing much softer weight, just trying to get to the nose and stick right there without moving it. Mustn't feel that he can make it without jamming on the red, on the yellow on the other side. Well, he shot. And there's your opportunity for two, two. you bet. We have seen a bunch with the end. In, in doesn't. Uh, in runs fairly the straight. First in, eh? sometimes when you have soft weight, it takes a little bit more of a curl than you think. It finished much more at the end. It starts to come off that nose, and that pops that back stone a little bit loose. So a chance for Kevin Cooey. Just a little more gradual. No, he, he looked like he was going to be closer than that. And I'm not throwing as much weight as him. Yeah. First end here at the Canad Inns Men's Classic, Kevin Cooey with a chance for a deuce in the opening end. Clean it, it's fine. Fine. Nice throws, Kev, really good. He makes the hit and he just does just that. So, two in the first for Kevin Cooey and an early 2 0 lead over Reed Crothers, who Mike Valente spoke to just a few minutes ago. Reed, how important is it to get out to that early lead? Uh, well, in any game, uh, it's obviously important. This is a big game for us. Uh, it gives us the evening off and a spot in the playoffs tomorrow. So 
for us, yeah, getting off to a good start is, is probably going to either make or break this game for us. What, what would you say the biggest strengths are of your team? Uh, I'd say, you know, being patient, having a pretty, we're all pretty calm for the most part. And, you know, whether we're in a tight game or we're up or we're down, I think we, we're pretty good at keeping a pretty even keel and, you know, being, uh, being in touch with uh, our emotions. So that's going to play, play a factor. Good luck today. Thanks Thank for your time. Yeah, thanks very much. Back upstairs to Mike and Kathy. Crown Produce Canada West Football is live on Shaw. Tune in Friday, October 23rd when the high-flying UBC Thunderbirds touch down in Saskatoon for a battle with the Saskatchewan Huskies. Crown Produce Canada West Football, only on Shaw. Shaw TV wants to send two deserving recipients to the 103rd Grey Cup. Do you know a super fan, a football player doing great work in their community, or perhaps a teacher who goes above and beyond for their students? Tell us why this person deserves a pair of tickets to the Grey Cup, and they will be entered to win tickets to the biggest CFL game of the year. Destination Centers, proud to support our community with 10 Destination Centers in Manitoba. Welcome back to the Canad Inns Destination Center in Portage and the 2015 Canad Inns Men's Classic. Our featured match is a B event final. Kevin Cooey leads Reed Crothers of Manitoba 2-0 after one end of play. And there was sort of a miss there uh, on the part of the Cooey rink, but they, they seem to turn things around and, and get a deuce anyhow. What Did uh, Crothers rank let them off the hook there? Or what? A, a little bit, but I think, you know, more you have to give credit to Kevin Cooey for making a very good shot on his first one, recognizing that with that miss by Mark Kennedy, that, you know, the one was on the table and was not content to take that. So by making that freeze, forced Reed to make a tough shot, got a bit of a break when it his stone popped out in the back and then made a nice second one. Kevin Cooey nope. very much known for that ability to throw the big up weight shot, but he's got a lovely touch as well. No scores to report in our other games yet on the ice. Another B event final, Nicholas Adine playing Charlie Thomas. And we have two C event semifinals. Brock Virtue is battling Craig Brown and Willie Lyburn of Manitoba is facing Jeff Hartung. We'll keep you abreast of those as developments happen. I mean, it's interesting, you know, you talked about the field. I look at sheet three where you've got an American team and a Saskatchewan team, and then you've got a Swedish team and an Alberta team and a Manitoba team, Saskatchewan, and then here, Alberta, Manitoba. So a really good representation of the western part of our country as well as two international teams fighting to get into that final eight. It's a great field that they're able to draw here every year. Yeah, and a lot of star power. Oh. Briar champions, uh, world champions. It's not one of the slam events, but it uh, seems to be well placed on the curling calendar. It is, and the, the beautiful thing about this event is that it has not moved for as long as you've been alive, that's for sure, Beauregard. And you know what, from the days when it was the McCain Skins and then it's changed sponsorship, but this city has always supported this event and it's always then. So people know that this is the weekend. Uh, you know, it's always been in October. It was a little bit later, but they've moved a little bit to allow for next weekend's event, which is another great event. It's the women's that comes out here. And again, that will be a tremendous field. Really, really great. At Portage has established itself as a curling host community, second to none. And kudos for Ken Eddins for stepping up. Oh, and good positive throw there. Um, it's, you know, a favored stop. But for many of the curlers, one stop shopping in terms of, you know, your accommodations and food. And, uh, Stay in a great hotel and you take 12 steps to get ready for your game every day. You never leave the building. It's awesome.
A reminder, we're back on the air at 8.30 tonight with the C event finals. Eight teams make the playoffs. Two are already in, Stephen Laycock of Saskatoon, Brad Jacobs of Ontario. Two more will qualify here. And then four more this evening. Clean. Nice Trying to play that run back and Clean. pick the stone out that's in the 12 foot as well. We'll just get the guard. Always helps to have a decent purse as well. Yes. Which they do here. $60,000 up for grabs, 18000 at the first place rink. And it's the biggest purse thus far in the World Curling Tour. The six slams have $100,000 purses, and they just added another slam this year, so they're up to six. Well, the really great thing about this event is that you have a combination of teams that get invited to the slam. But I was talking to Guy Hemmings earlier, who, of course, made a lot of fan favorites the year the Briar was in the arena. The lights went out, and he changed the score on the board and had a lot of fun with it. You know, that's a team that isn't invited to the slam. If you're not at the top of the leaderboard, you don't have those opportunities. And so here you have the teams that are slam teams that are the top money winners, but you also have an opportunity for teams like Matt Dunstone. Br uh, Braden Calvert was here. Young junior teams that are at the top of the junior uh, world, not only in Canada and in Manitoba, but it gives them a chance to play against the big guns and see what the differences are and to learn from that, and I think that that's tremendous. Yeah. Got to be positive though too, eh? Key Hemmings has been eliminated. Daly Peters is out as well, and if you missed it off the top, Mike McEwen, two-time defending champion, eliminated, losing three consecutive games. It looks like more than Derek after winning his first two. Reed will continue to guard that stone, even though you may wonder why you're guarding a stone that's in the 12 foot. For Reed, it's all about finding a way to score two points and get back to even. And if protecting that stone continues to waste away at the blue stones being thrown by Kevin Cooey, then he's content with that. And will utilize his final stone to draw for that second point. Yeah. Right? Or, yeah, I don't hate this now. You don't mind it now? Yeah. I think you'll get a bit of curl out here. Okay. Nicholas Sedin, former champion from Sweden, Olympian. He's trailing uh, Charlie Thomas of Calgary, one nothing, in the second end. Thomas is out of the Glencoe as well. Uh, club mate of Kui Forsum. They're on sheet four. And they have spent a lot of time over the last couple of years in Canada. In fact, probably spend more time here in this country competing during the circuit than they do elsewhere in the world, recognizing that this is where you will play many more really great teams than perhaps one from each country that they would play in Europe. So it is about intensity and it is about the maximum potential of playing and trying to get their game to it, the level that they've been at and perhaps even higher. And the Asian teams have seemed to buy yes. into that strategy as well. Very much so. And we always talk about the time in the end when you play the switch, which is you continue to do the same thing, but at some point you have to change tactics, and that was the decision by Kevin Cooey on Marks. We're best. not going to keep peeling that guard and hope for a different result. Go Let's go after him and try to steal. Well, that's, that's fine. We know, we should know that. You like this? Should know it, yeah. yeah. Just draw the button, really. And there's the should know it, talking about which turn to play. This is the turn that they utilize for the draw to the button, so they'll take the same ice that they did to get to the pin. They set that pretty good. 
lines, lines key, guys. If you're if you're top eight edge on edge, it's still a pretty good shot, right? But try and make it on the button. Last of the third stones, Braden Muscoey. Braden, a former champion out of Saskatchewan. Brock Virtue represented Saskatchewan at the Briar several years ago. Playing Craig Brown of Blaine, Minnesota in the C event semifinal. No score on that. And a big commitment match. by the U.S. as well, Mike, to spend a lot more time up here. In the uh, center in Blaine was announced as the Olympic Training Center. And we had the opportunity to go down and play there earlier in the year. Tremendous facility. It's got a couple of hockey rinks and tons of soccer fields. It is an ultimate sportsplex. And they really have put a lot of money. It, it keeps the ice in all year long, so their teams can play and practice. There's a spring league, a summer league, an opportunity if you want to go shopping and throw some rocks in the summer, <laughs> all of those things. And where is that, Blaine? Uh, it's just outside of Minneapolis, on, on the way. Into good, skip stones good. now. Line good, room. Line good. A great opportunity for the Cooey team. That rock sliding a little bit deep by Braden. If he can park right on top, will be very tough for the Carruthers team to find a way to get shot. Never, tu never touches this, but... Yeah, it can, eh? I don't think it can. It's really close. <laughs> if you hit like yeah. a half centimeter, it can. It'd be really tough looking at whether that double is there, but that Yellowstone did move back to, enough to play the so pick. Pushes this to here. Yeah, it's pretty sure. tough yeah. to yeah. make I mean, that double yeah. without yeah. touching yeah. the yellow. Pretty, yeah. pretty nice. Quarter rock is what you want. Right. Even thinner yeah. the better, I'll be yeah. sure. But dead straight just yeah, throw it, it straight be. yeah yeah we'll try and try and just dead pick it move this they don't mind if their yellowstone moves back a bit in fact if it does that's all to the better you don't no, leave don't the same shot it. again you just want to make sure it sticks around it's about a millimeter it might well it will but not off ours it doesn't First stone for Reed Crothers. He has the hammer here in the second end, down 2 0. Yes, yes, yes! Could we lying shot with that blue stone? You're like in the out? I just wanted to hit it just that little bit thinner, and you heard the screaming at the end. It just finished enough that it caught that yellow stone on the back. That's what I'm thinking. In my There's no double for two. Yeah. It's no, if I make this, he's got no shot. For us to leave a double for two, we'd have to be like... Here. Yeah. It's the same shot. Now we'll be close on this too, right? I had you here. For Kevin wanting to come around and 
lie two in the forefoot, take away the draw opportunity for Reed. If he's able to be three quarters buried and biting the top of the button. Are we sweeping for button or you want to bite the button? Yeah, as buried as you can get it. Last stone for Kevin Cooey here in the second, trying to manufacture a steal. Already up 2 nothing. Switching so that Ben, who's got the push, will help to direct the stone and bury it more. It's there, but it's really tough. Yeah, I don't think it's there, to be honest with you. To throw enough weight to get this out and stick. And stick. That's the tough part. It's pretty tough. I need to throw the same thing. Pretty much exact same Third. Spot. Quarter rock, third. Whoa, whoa. Yeah. Yeah. Quarter, quarter, third. Quarter yeah. makes it. Yeah. Yeah. That looks a little less. Look. What? Touch. Is that the same? It looks a little less. I hadn't. Yeah, it might be a little less. Good. Yeah. Peel. So trying to get rid of both and play the double. The, not a question about whether the double is there. For sure it is. But whether you can hold your shooter or not is, is the challenge. They think it unlikely. I agree. But you get rid of the two, you at least score. Last rock, second end, Reed Crothers down 2 nothing, facing two Cooey counters. Oh, and it flashes through. Ouch. And they'll give up one. Well, I think it might even be two. So a steal for Kevin Cooey here in the second end, and he increases his lead on Reed Crothers. We'll be back in a moment with more of our B event final in just a moment. You're watching the Canad Inns Men's Classic on Shaw TV. Shaw TV, we are proud to bring you live events and we value your comments. Call the Shaw TV viewer response line now, 204-480-3500, or email us, shawtvwinnipeg at shaw.ca, and let us know how we're doing. Or find us on Facebook and Twitter at Shaw TV Winnipeg. Tavern United, a new world sports pub. With a wide selection of sporting events televised at our eight locations in Manitoba. Tavern United, your destination for great sports all the time. Welcome back to the Tavern United in the Canad Inns destination here in uh, Portage La Prairie and the Canad Inns Men's Classic RB event final has Kevin Cooey up 4-0 on Reed Crothers after a steal of two in the second end. So back-to-back -back deuces to open this game uh, from the Cooey force and who actually lost to Crothers uh, on the A event side. And just updating our other B event final, it's 
uh, Nicholas Adin down one nothing to Charlie Thomas Shot. of Calgary. And we've got two C event uh, semifinals going on, and it's really Lyburn with an early one nothing lead on Jeff Hartung, and uh, Brock Virtue has a one nothing lead on Craig Brown of Blaine, Minnesota. So four nothing in our featured game after two. Oh, and Reed went down to throw his second stone. He had asked Braden that whether he'd. It was a little bit less ice, so we took a little bit more, and we're right behind that sheet. Just came out and flipped it out a little bit, and with that kind of weight, it's just not going to move. It runs very, very straight, and it didn't catch enough of it to make that second stone go out, and so really, uh, we're looking at, for the Carruthers team to get back into this game, have to gamble very hard. Mine's pretty good. It's got a curl bit. No Jeff Stoughton here this year. Well, he that? will be here during the week. He's been hired by Curling Canada to do uh, to be sort of the leader or to manage the mixed doubles program because with the decision last year in Sochi that mixed doubles will become a part of the Olympic program, Canada's scrambling now to come up with a process of how we'll choose our champions. And so there is an event here that is happening during the week that is bringing in mixed doubles teams from across the country. It's a bond spill and the winners will be decarded. So all of a sudden you start to get money to hone your skills. And Jeff has been asked to manage that program. Of course, a former oh, nice. Canadian mixed champion a number of times, although he played with the four system. He certainly understands curling and what it's like to play with women. So is he You're a good playing? man by saying nothing. No, he's not playing. He's just arranging and uh, trying to make sure that there's a good system and a process. Trying to utilize that corner guard. Good job, buddy. I mean, it's early, but these are shorter games, Kathy. So what's the strategy if you're down at 4 nothing there, exactly Coach? Exactly what you saw. You have to throw the corner guards, and when you do get one, you have to take advantage of that and get around buried, which they did. Those two blue stones are out counting, but there's a relatively easy double there, and so Reed's not going to be particularly concerned about those and for Kevin Cooey with that four point edge is not going to mess around with those stones and just try to have Brent clear everything out in the front. Michael Sedin's final stone. Draw for two. So he's up 2-1 uh, now on the Thomas foursome. Yeah, it's either guard or, right, so. I don't really like the freeze, either the hit and roll or just the draw behind. Well, he could guard it, yeah. Are we, uh, are we two, three, four? Four. Well, have you hit and roll this? Yeah. Easy. Is it too early for this? It depends how hard you want to go. If you if you were lying third at this point, then the guard's a good call because you still have that double opportunity. The challenge is that it's fourth stone, so they want to bring it into play. Really important for Derek to stick around on this. Come on, baby. I'm trying to get it to roll under. Got shot. Probably want to make that. Well, he, he's just going to play it back. But. You got the double. I don't hate nose. 
I like. The, I don't mind the nose, Kev. Okay. If Even he makes the roll under, we should have this. That's not bad as long as we're sitting three. Um, control. Okay. So I threw. I threw normal here in the first. What was the discussion on that stone, Kathy? Just looking at you know where we go. They're they're playing the chess match, trying to figure out. You know, if they roll under, what are they going to have? They want to make sure that they don't line up a triple. It's a lot of respect for your opponent. So they just play to the nose. So if it's just easy to sit with same ice, it's probably pretty good, eh? Wyvern match. And it looked like a hit for two. Willie was attempting to make a triple on his first one. He hit two of them out and just rolled one of them, but didn't get quite out far enough, so it looked like they're allowed the two. So that'd be three nothing Lyburn over Hard Tongue. C event semifinal. Is it, is, it, is, is it helping us to know? Yeah, you feel it. But, and if you catch it, then we go hard. As soon as you have a chance, go hard for the double. The, it's a third to make it, isn't it? Yeah. Third quarters. Yeah. That was two for Hartung, so it should be 2 1 Hartung over Lyburn. Well, I have a go. post directly in front of me. <laughs> two for Hartung. <laughs> So for Kevin removing the stone that they can see, really important to always play the scoreboard. This is not shot stone, but looking to hopefully catch a side. Just missed under. But at a minimum, you remove or eliminate opportunities for Reed to start to gather momentum with stones in the house. Or just play hair high and try to do this. No. Okay, big roll. roll into the four foot line. Rolling to the four foot line, any good? That's good. Yeah. Ah, uh, yee. I don't know, probably the end. He'll take a run at it. Slush is, yeah. Wherever it can jam. I think here then. Here. Roll the foot. Easy? Easy. So as you look at this, for sure the double is there. He could run it straight back and make the double, but in the process of removing both of those blue stones, your yellow stone will be there. That would allow Kevin Cooey in turn to play the double back and then your end is gone. So this is not about making all the blue go away. Make one go away, roll a little bit. Maybe they jam in the process. Again, it's trying to ensure your two as much as you can. What if he, what if he knows it now? I think if he's smart, he knows it. Yeah. yeah, you can roll in front. Yeah. But just to split just center. Just to split center? Okay. And the double jumps. Okay. Uh, that same weight I threw in that hit for two. That was, you're throwing that same weight? Yep. Okay, so I had you about here for nose. And we dead nose. You threw it good. Much, so, so give me a little left. Right there, good board, sure. Looking to roll this to the center line so that any attempted double by Reed Carruthers will drive it straight back onto that yellow stone. 
think we're fine, even if we roll Like a too deeper far. roll? I was just wondering. And then well, he... I think this is good, but all I'm saying is, even if you roll over here somewhere, it's better. Yeah, then, you're, then you have to double yeah, noses. If, if I go like this, then yeah. he does it. You have no slash. Okay. I'd probably play that and okay. sit two. I got you. Into skip stones now in the third end. Kevin Cooey with a 4 0 lead on Reed Crothers. He scored two with a hit in the first end and then stole two in the second. Accomplish both with this. Yeah. Don't want to play normal to keep it above the seven. It's not that much higher, right? Yeah, it's pretty precise though. Like if you if you don't get se second shot with it, it's garbage. Yeah. He just noses. Yeah. Oh, this. Oh, here though, what does he play? And I got a pretty, it's pretty tough, tough for him to stick that. True. Yeah. That might be best, huh? Yeah. You got options with it. What are you thinking, D? That's it's pretty yeah, good. That's what yeah. I was thinking. Probably the best shot. It should be real good speed here, right? This should be like yeah. 14. Trying to lock like a third on? Yeah, third on is real good. If you make yeah. that good, yeah. Yeah, Love makes that. it a little tricky for him. Okay, so if we want to be a hair high, though, I think we need like there. Yeah, I agree with that. Okay. Yeah. So good 15, you think? Yeah, you're throwing 15 here. So the plan to corner freeze on that blue shot stone, that does two things. One, it creates another point in the house for Reed Carruthers. The other thing it does is it takes away a free pass at that stone that's at the back of the forefoot for Kevin Cooey. They think that he can play off his own, but then again, if you're playing off your own, you're eliminating one of your own. Very precise shot for Reed. Not only about weight, don't want to bounce off because then the double is there. Big moment for the sweepers as well in terms of judging to place the stone in the right spot. First stone for Reed Crothers. He has the hammer here in the third. Looks like a time. Just freeze it. Line's perfect. Freeze it. Line's perfect. Absolutely perfect line. No bounce. Look there. Look there. It is. It's there. It's there. If I just chisel this and it doesn't touch this, it's not terrible. <laughs> Right, like if I do something like that. Oh. Yeah, I don't know. If, I don't know if that is there. That's pretty That's tough. Hard to get it out. Looking it's at whether that close. double is there, if you can hit it to miss that blue one that it's right beside to catch that me. yellow oh, yeah, one at the way. back. Right. So you're thinking a little bit less weight and just roll in front of it. Well, we're, we're talking about sticking this one, and he's forced. Yeah, I don't like it. I know it is. If we stick this one, how did you get to it? It's, you, it's hard, but it's there. I don't want, I really like this. If you ever do this. That's what Kev's thinking, too. Well, if you roll right on top of it, he, he, he's got the thin triple. That's it. But if you're, you're rolling to here, then this goes here, right? But you're probably throwing that a little softer, or, or we throw it hard and try to make the double. It is, isn't it? Like if you hair. 
Yeah, there's one one spot. One to spot it. to hit it. I don't want to get cute though. No, I'm, I'm not. Yeah. Well, he can get his deuce here, guys. It's fine. What do you I like, Brent? Oh, I see what you're saying. You're saying stuff that there. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, that's... I don't mind this. Well, then he can't nose that. I mean, he's... If I play this, he's... Odds are he has an easy shot for two. Hey, if I stick it right there. <laughs> um, How do we make it? Well, I think we throw it hard and just take the guesswork out and run it. In turn or out turn? Out turn down center. Probably the easiest way. Probably the easiest way. It'll never, because you're, you're trying to hit. You're trying to hit like like a thick half. Yeah. Right? Thick, thick half. half. I like it. Okay. That looks close for Lion. This, this looks... Uh... Okay. What, what do you think? No, I think it's real close. Yeah, we're thinking thick half. Well, they felt that no matter what they play, they were going to allow Reed an opportunity to make a good shot for two. This is a, this is what I would not what I would ever suggest to a junior team to do, which is hit your own and try to run it back onto the opponents. And this is the shot stone that you are hitting. Last rock for Cooey, trying to minimize the damage. Sorry guys. We saw that move. He wanted to throw it hard to take the guesswork out because they typically run very, very straight. That curled a little bit much at the end. They were hoping to nut it, hit it dead on the nose and not moving it by rolling over that little bit. It does allow the off nose chance for Reed for the double to get within two. A millimeter high normal weight. Just straight here, boys. <clears throat> Last rock, third end. Reed Crothers yep. down four nothing with a chance to get back oh, really into this game, oh, but he's picked. not happy. Yes. It picked. Yes. Sweep it. That's really unfortunate. And he'll give up another steal, a steal of one here in the third end to go down five nothing. An unfortunate development. Five nothing the score after three. Our Mike Valente spoke to Kevin Cooey prior to the game, and here's that interview. Kevin, as the skip, are there any special things you do with your team before a big draw like today? No, I don't think so. I mean, we have our usual routines. Uh, this is, I think, our fourth event of the year, so we're well into the season. And, you know, we just do what we need to do to get ready. This will be a good test for us. Reed's team's playing pretty well. Is the game plan to come out firing and put the pressure on them early? Yeah, I hope so. I mean, the plan is just to, to play well. Uh, you don't expect to, to win easy for sure, especially against a good team like this. Thank you, Kevin. Back up to Sears to you guys. WHL Hockey is live on Shaw. Watch Wednesday, October 28th, when the Lethbridge Hurricanes storm into the Coliseum for a big battle with the Vancouver Giants. Levitt Machinery, WHL Hockey, only on Shaw. 
I am Amy Purdy. At 19, I contracted bacterial meningitis. With less than a 2% chance to live, I slipped into a coma and lost both of my legs below the knee. Now I have lots of legs, and I feel lucky, lucky to be alive. So I can tell you, not all meningitis is the same. Not all vaccines are the same. Get the one that fully protects your child. The Meningitis Research Foundation of Canada can help. Now you know. Canadian's Destination Centers. Proud to support our community with 10 destination centers in Manitoba. Welcome back to the Portage Curling Club and the Canad Inn's Destination Center. We're up in the Tavern United, and the smell of chicken fingers is absolutely killing me. Uh, Kathy Gauthier. <laughs> it's not me. <laughs> you smell chicken fingers it's everywhere. It's a difficult place to call a curling match from. Go, guys. Head Ever towards the barn, put in that order, yeah. and never be seen again. <laughs> Or the fish and chips aren't bad here either. No, they're not. And they actually have a great Caesar salad. Look at you. I'm working. Have you. Every, working? I'm working because I know you haven't had dinner. <laughs> I know. So, I'm just. And you've got the fat wallet of the two people here. Well. So. It's because you don't bring one. That's why. <laughs> well, a bad break for Reed Carruthers for sure in that last end. Either trailing by four and struggling to find some momentum and find a bright light that's going to help. And that little bit of a roll by Kevin Cooey on his final stone allowed the opportunity for the double by Reed to get within two. Still a very tough road to hoe down two without, but picking almost right out of his hand and giving up another steal. And this Cooey team is not only very strong, but they're exceptionally strong at hitting in the big weight. And so on ice like this, that, that kind of weight will keep things relatively straight. Pretty tough for the Carruthers team to stay focused. So are we going to pretty much see a fast game from here? We, we may. Sure. This is one of those where you have to make strategic decisions. Teams are told they must play six ends, very much like at a national championship where you have minimum ends that you must play. But because the loser of this is not out, they will go back on on the next draw with their final opportunity to qualify. You can expect that in the sixth end, there will be a decision made about whether they think that they can recoup those points or if they want to pack it in, take a little bit of a break, turn the negatives into positive and look to the next draw. This is a B event final, so well, obviously the winner advances to tomorrow's championship round. The loser will play in the C event finals tonight. There's one other B event final going on right now, and it's defending world champion Nicholas Adine leading Charlie Thomas of Calgary 2-1. And we've got a couple of C event semifinals on the go as well. Brock Virtue is leading Craig Brown, and uh, Willie Lyburn is down 2-1 to Jeff Hartung. Like this, yeah. What are you thinking, here? Yeah, oh, I know. I think he's wondering about the outturn. I don't mind, I don't mind this, harder. Brett. That's fine too. Looks natural. The question was never the shot, it was which turn works better. Wait, go, Kip. No. No. And that no roll comment by Kevin would is that he would have been happy for it to stay on the center line, would have taken away access to the shot stone. But by rolling under, it is that stone that Derek is looking to sit on top of. Rear guys, looks uh, heavy. Eight. Yep, yep. Eight. 
Just pick it, Kev. Yes. I think so. Gonna lose ours though for sure. Yeah, I don't think that's, that's terrible. Think he goes that's okay. over, he's going over here. That's okay. UPL. Oh yeah. All day. Sure. He's gonna go around the corner and I might have a chance to chase him. Brent's Rock's in a really good spot. Make this. Try to pick out that yellow stone. That is second shot. Make it go away. They don't care if they lose their back one. Here is Mark Kennedy. So he's third. Okay. That's Cooey's Blue Stone up 5 nothing. if you're just joining us. Playing the fourth end in a B event final here at the Canad Inns Men's Classic. Well, and as projected, good. when room, Mark room, and room, room, Kevin room, were talking room. about what would happen when they played the pick, they knew that Reed would hey, utilize that corner guard and try to bury. And the Cooey team very much will be playing the scoreboard with that five-point edge. We'll eliminate that corner guard and try to ensure that at a minimum or rather a maximum that they hold Carruthers' team to two. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Either way, guys, watch the shooter. I don't know. Asking for the run back. No, 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 no. He's drawing, eh? What's that? He's drawing, eh? You want to go this way? Well, I'm just telling you, that's what he's doing. If we do this, why are you hitting roll and yes, then you? We go this way though. You want to go deep? Whatever you think. He's gonna make that, but at least then it's yeah. maybe open and we can come again. Okay, let's go T line. Braden's concern from the hack is that if they bury it perfectly behind that corner guard, they feel that Kevin will switch tactics and go around the center. I'm not sure that he would, to be honest, with a 5 nothing lead and Mark shot. Last of the third stones here in the fourth end. Room still. Take it deep. Go ahead, Take it deep. Never dare. Never dare. As much as you can get. Yep, 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 yep. Close to the same, not maybe a Any shade left. To it? How much do you have? Oh, it's, it's not a great line. I mean, you could just peel it. It's, I know that's tough. Or we could throw a, a, a boardish type of thing. Here, Betty. 
Think so? A chisel. Not the end of the I world. I'm just afraid of doing something like this, right? Yeah. So you can peel it if you want. You can throw uh, it. If you want to throw a dart at it, you can, but see what it looks like from there. <clears throat> it just looks hard to me like it could run on that line, so, right? So I don't mind like a like a good hack. hack. Stay here. Just yeah. Like I would think something like that's pretty close. Yeah. We're thinking good hack. Is this they, close? They went from talking about yeah, the draw to what I think is just a classic example of a great suggestion by a third. Not so much the shot that he selected, but how he did. You know, any chance you want to, essentially leading him to another shot without forcing his opinion. And Kevin looked at it in a different way. So they want to remove that stone. There is probably maybe a quarter that he can see from the hack. And we have seen with that up weight that they do back up. And so they want to get to that stone, but using a different kind of weight. So just quiet down weight. Into skip stones, now in the fourth. First for Kevin Cooey, up 5 nothing. I think ice would have been pretty cool, sir. Did I throw it wide? Maybe a hair okay. closet. Yeah, then it's. I, I think this. I think this would be good. Because we got to get it buried, or it's yeah. useless, right? Yeah. I think mine will curl a little more than you. Sure. Yeah, a little less, less. Right in the middle. That's middle. And the really good thing about Kevin Cooey's shot is not only did he remove it, but he rolled away from that path, and so it is forcing yep. Reed to have exact weight instead of being able to come down to something. Reed beat Kevin Cooey in the A event semifinals before losing to Brad Jacobs, and that's why he's Playing this match right here. Now it was plan B by Braden thinking that if he was heavy, maybe they would hit it thin enough that they might get some momentum and roll behind that corner here for that side of button drop yeah are you thinking same shot and or, or, no I, yeah. I like this so i think you're probably here yeah i like that he's not it's not getting any faster eh? he's just Kevin verifying with his sweepers that the ice conditions are remaining the same as far as they can tell. Stay line good. Back button. We've got room. Room. How's the weight? Hold. Okay. Line's closed. We don't quite have the line we want. Well, look heavy. Right on it. Line's good. It's picking. Oh dear. There's another one. You can see where it hit the, the dead spot or it picked that the handle just changed. It's a sliver last. Can you uh, clean that up though? Sure. Now is that unusual, Kathy? We're still in the fourth end. I think we've had three in this this yeah, I'm game. not I am not sure what's going on and we're not watching the other sheets as intently. I've not been, uh, just seen through. the same thing yeah. happening. It's hard to say what it is. Typically if you have a a dead spot or a from a, a knee that's gone down or a hand that's gone down, it's it's in a specific path where the players are sliding and it sort of seems random. 
where these are happening. Mine's good. Last Rock, fourth end, Reed Crothers with a, an opportunity to claw back a bit here. A chance for a deuce. No problem. Draw for two for the defending Manitoba Provincial Men's Champion. And he's at least back in this game somewhat. 5-2 he trails through four ends of play. We're back with much more of the Canadiens Men's Classic from Portage in just a moment. Stay tuned. Sometimes we all need our space, and that goes for recyclables too. Toss them loosely into the bin without stuffing containers into one another. For more recycling tips from Multi-Material Stewardship Manitoba, visit simplyrecycle.ca. Tavern United, a new world sports pub. With a wide selection of sporting events televised at our eight locations in Manitoba. Tavern United, your destination for great sports all the time. Here with Reed Crothers, after four ends, what would you say are the biggest challenges you've seen today? Uh, getting our rocks in good spots. I think we got caught on a couple spots. I've missed a couple key shots. So, yeah, we're in a little bit of trouble, but, you know, we got a break and we're down three without the hammer, so we're going to put some rocks in play. How, would you, how have you found the ice today? Well, the ice is great. Uh, it's, it's about as quick as I've seen it uh, this week. Uh, it's curling nice, so there's no complaints. Thank you very much for your time. Yeah, you. You're watching the 2015 Canad Men's Classic here in Portage La Prairie on Shaw TV. Here with Kevin Cooey, after four ends, it's 5-2. to What have you thought of your team's effort here today? Yeah, we've played good, uh, made a lot of good shots. Uh, you know, Reed's missed a couple that he, he usually doesn't miss to, to give us a lead. But, uh, you know, we're, we're in good shape, but we still got to play well the rest of the way. Does the strategy change at all the rest of the way? Yeah, I mean, we'll try and keep it pretty, pretty simple, hopefully. And, uh, you know, just try not to get in too much trouble. Thanks, Kevin. Back upstairs to Mike and Kathy. Thank you, Mike. Kevin Cooey up five to two on Reed Crothers, the winner of this B event final. Gets a berth into the playoffs tomorrow. He started with 32 rinks. We'll be down to eight qualifiers uh, at the end of the evening. Two have already qualified, Stephen Laycock of Saskatoon and uh, Brad Jacobs. Mike McEwen has been eliminated, if you're just joining us, uh, losing three consecutive matches. Mike had won the last two Canadians men's classics and I think he's won probably four in the last five years. It has been a favorite event for them. They've been very, very successful here. Now before this match, uh, we were downstairs, Kathy um, filming our opening and uh, chatting up uh, some of the competitors and uh, there's a lot of discussion about Lord, brooms and I know there's been sort of um, a decision made by a good number of elite curling teams, over 20 of them, to not use brooms that have directional fabric. Maybe you can just sort of elaborate on that. And this decision has been made before even governing bodies have Absolutely. decided uh, uh, a course of action. 
Well, I think that it's normal that in any sport, you know, manufacturers of equipment and the players are always looking for something new and new edge. And the directional fabric, the best way I can explain it is, you know what, uh, you know, long hair on a cat might feel like. So you brush it one way, it's all soft, but if you do it the other way, A, the cat hates it, and B, it all sticks up and it's bristly. And it's almost like a sandpaper surface when it goes backwards. And so the introduction of directional fabric has meant that for the very first time, you know, it really wasn't about how well the players threw because the brushers, if they were at a 45 degree angle and closest to the broom, could really make a rock curl a ton or stay dead straight. And we also saw that was sliding 90 degrees. So across the face of the stone, you could slow a rock down four feet. So your skip's a little bit heavy. All of a sudden, players are sweeping to slow it down. And, you know, the manufacturers got into a little bit of a situation where one of them demonstrated something at the Stew Cells last weekend in Ontario, which they say they were never going to sell, that they gave it to a couple of teams to demonstrate that without some sort of fabric standards, they could keep doing one-upmanship. And so then the integrity of the sport is challenged and it no longer takes into consideration people like Mark and Ben who have worked their entire life to be in shape, the Jacobs team who put being fit you know, right at the forefront of all sports. It took a lot of that out. It became more about the technique and the fabric you had on your brush than the strength, the conditioning, the judgment of the sweepers to put the stone and the ability of the curler to throw the right weight. So last weekend, a number of teams, it was 22 at the time, signed a petition that even without being forced to do so by a governing body, they would no longer use brooms with directional fabric. Doesn't matter who's making them. It's, they would not use them. And so for this event, I've already seen more hairbrushes out here than I've seen in a long time. And I looked at the Carruthers brooms before we came out when we were talking, and what they've done is they've flipped the fabric upside down, and so that that directional fabric is on the inside, and it's a flat surface on the outside. One of the things that Reed said that it was a bit of a challenge is getting used to the break points being a little bit different. You're using a different device than you had before. You still have to judge stones, but what you're used to for putting a rock in a certain spot is a little bit different now. You can expect uh, the WCF is right now drafting up an equipment inspection policy that very much like golf, where there will be inspection of all equipment of all brooms before players play at national events, uh, play at provincial events, and Curling Canada will take their cue from what the WCF puts into place. What I found really fascinating is that it was the players that said, this is not what we want, this is not where we want our game to go. And of those 22 teams that signed that last week, it was teams yep. like Nicholas Adine, Thomas Ulsrud. So it's not just the Canadian players that are saying, we don't want that. It is the European players, that the, the top European teams, that also want to ensure that there is a level field. So you can expect that there will be some rulings coming in the very short term. But in the meantime, the players have said, um, we don't want this to be dictating our game. We'll be interested to see if the women's teams all do the same next weekend. It's not a rule. It's a decision by some of the players. And I think it's a good one. I think it's really great when the players take the sport into their own hands before the governing body enforces something and forces them to do that. Yeah, it's a gutsy move because, um, you know, those manufacturers sponsor teams. And they do for sure. I guess ice makers would be pretty happy about that, huh? Well, and it's, that's, you know, some of the brooms that we've seen over the years have, you know, in an effort to help sweepers get better at dragging the stone farther, so farther than, say, four feet or six feet that you can take them, you know, we've seen that for the first four or five ends, they're fantastic, but then what they actually do is they break down the pebble to the point that the surface becomes flat, and then what was really great in the first four or five can't sustain the conditions that you want to play under. And so 
it is good that the manufacturers are looking for new and different things, but there comes a point, you go back to uh, another sport that went through the same thing was swimming not that long ago. They kept coming out with these suits that mm -hmm. were shattering all sorts of world records and it wasn't so much the swimming, it was what you were wearing and they wound up enforcing a rule that took a certain kind of suit out of the sport and put it back to helping but not changing outcome. And I think that that's what the players here are looking for. Now, do you see a use for this sort of technology, for example, with, with people like me or beginners or... No, because what you're play? really doing is that you're not teaching. So if, for example, I gave you one of those directional fabric brooms and you, as a, as a beginner or an average curler, were going to use them, you're, the, the technique that you're using is not really what we would teach as a curling technique. And you're not teaching players to throw the rock cleanly. You're teaching a sweeper to manipulate the technology or sweep on a corner of a stone or on a certain degree to make different things happen that would be different than if I threw it cleanly beside you. And at some point for sure, you really want to teach young people that practice is what makes you better. Throwing good is what should get you better results. So no, nothing's going to help you. I will not endorse that. That's unfortunate. Yeah. You saw visions gone. of the briar in your future, I suspect. 5-2 is our score here. Kevin Cooey leading Reed Crothers of Manitoba. And the other B event final, it's Nicholas Adine uh, still okay. leading. Mine's pretty good. Don't touch it then. See? Charlie okay, Thomas of Calgary. 2-1 is the score there in the fifth. Okay, freeze the nose. Winners no, advance to the championship round tomorrow. Eight teams qualify. Draws tomorrow at 10 a.m., 2 o'clock in the afternoon in the championship final at 6, and we'll have that for you live here on Shaw TV. And just to close one more point on the sweeping thing, I think, Mike, the other thing that it showed not only in the uh, Vernon ladies last weekend where the same issues were taking place as well as the stew cells is that teams would use one sweeper because that one sweeper with the abrasive brush could do it all themselves. You didn't even need to. The other player would either not do it or just walk alongside. And again, that's not something that we'd like to see. So do we have teams here using it? Uh, we have teams here that have flipped for sure. Either changing their brushes completely or flipping over the head so it is the non-directional fabric that is on the side that is brushing the ice. Oh, right off. So we watch. Mark trying to make the double. Couple did funny things. Uh, I don't I didn't mind your ice. Got to throw it hard at the nose. <laughs> Looking over at the Brock Virtue Craig Brown game. This is a C event semifinal. a draw for what appears to be two if you look at that far 12 foot stone on the other side it's and a very Brown low scoring, scoring game yeah it'd be 2-1 yep. yep. brown over virtue yep, yep. gotta go by yep. our count and that's through Whoa. six ends yep yep gotta go yep Whoa. trying to run it straight back makes the run double very nice to lie three. And in the other C event uh, semifinal, Willie Lyburn is up 42 on Jeff Hartung. I think you are. Yeah, you are. Winners of those C event semifinals have a chance at a spot in the championship round later tonight, 8.30, and we'll be on the air to bring you those. All right, just, yeah, let's make sure the double. Yeah, so pretty much right where you want to hit it, I think. Yeah, yeah. So try and hit it a sliver high. Yeah, I got you.
oh. some big weight oh. ability by Kevin Cooey. No, come on, come, no. come on. Oh, I almost got this. Hoping to get Good the job, triple. Man. That might be best. Spills two yellow stones. He has the hammer here yeah, in the fifth. Yeah, he's not Scored two in the first on a takeout and then stole the second and third ends to go up 5 nothing. Carruthers responded with a deuce in the fourth, so we're at 5 2. Derek did. Look like good speed. Yeah, it seemed like it. Mark Kennedy taking the responsibility of putting up a score like for speed you threw here, right? the Carruthers team. Okay. Yeah, because I threw the draw that that path like pretty light. Yeah, you guys helped it curl too though. Yeah. Should be uh, a lot of room, but just wait. Just wait. Kind of room. It's not that kind light. Of room. It's gonna have to curl. I still think it's there. I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Half open. Might as well. Yep. 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 Might as yep. well. Yep. Don't touch it, Hodge. Full yep. Hodge. Yep. Like, I haven't seen this out. Okay, so I mean, we know the draw weight as long as we're not, as long as the ice is the same. Yeah. Which I think it's really close to the intern draw you just threw. Facing two, he just took a quick look to see whether that double was there. You'd need to probably play at the side where the guard is, and it's not worth the risk to him with that three point edge. We'll draw for the single. Had that vote of confidence from Mark before he left that the conditions have not changed. Looking for full eight. Last rock, fifth end, Kevin Cooey with a 5 2 lead facing two. And he gets his single, forced to take one here in the fifth end. 6-2 is our score in our featured match. We're back with much more curling from Portage in just a moment. Stay tuned. Welcome back to the Portage Curling Club. They're going to be playing another end here. It is six to two as we head back to the action. Thanks very much, Mike. Kathy Goetzee, Mike Beauregard upstairs in Tavern United here at the Canad Inns Destination Center in Portage La Prairie, Manitoba. Beautiful facility. And it also has uh, Portage Curling Club as part of the package here. You do not have to go outdoors right, if it's boys. winter. You can right go up. from your room to the restaurant to the curling club. We have an update in the Edine Thomas game, and it's tied now 3 3 through five ends. Nicholas Edine, the defending world champion, having defeated, I think it was Thomas Holrood, right, in an all European final. 
And uh, that's pretty Good. rare, is it not? What's that? See two European teams in the world yeah, final? Yeah, you know, we typically like to have Canada in there, but I think if you look at our record internationally, and it's one of the reasons I think that Curl and Canada will continue to look at ways of ensuring that the strongest teams do get out of the country, it's that our record internationally has not been what we would like it to be. It's not been consistently coming home with gold medals. I do think that some of it is that we are spoiled so much in this country with tremendous ice conditions. And often when you play the worlds offshore, you're dealing with all sorts of things. Uh, you know, the, the rocks are not usually the issue. It's usually the ice conditions. I know the last time I played in a women's world with Jennifer in 2005 in Paisley, Scotland, they put it in a building that had a swimming pool in the building <laughs> and the wall between the curling and the, the swimming pool didn't even go to the roof and so the sheet the end sheet melted and they took it out of play and the other sheets is that you got farther and farther away from the swimming pool the ice got better but you know those are the conditions that you don't train to play under and and you have to deal with for sure but uh yeah that has not been 100 percent assurance for canadian teams and so yes it is it's not super normal to see two european teams but it's not that rare either and the competition's much better oh now. gosh for sure you know with the the money tours are there yep. more events and yep. more opportunity for teams from abroad to and come over and play? And they train here, yes, for sure. And so there no longer is that who will be from Canada and do we know anything about them. Whoever is representing Canada, you can be sure the European teams are very familiar with them. And you've got Olympic dollars yep. in play. You know, you've got countries making the investment now in, in curling programs. So Kevin Cooey will try to keep this extremely simple. And so what kind of measures uh, are we making well, or you taking know in this country it, right now? It's not as much as measures, but you've certainly seen what's happened at the national level. They expanded it to include Nunavut, the territories, and then last year that relegation system that did not go over very well at all. And so that's being changed so that that won't happen. Uh, they're, they're looking at different things, but I've also heard a lot of discussion that the Canada Cup may be the future of how we choose our representative to actually go to a world championship. I know there's a lot of discussion. I think we're quite a few years away from making a change away from a Scotties or a Briar, but it certainly has been discussed because the Canada Cup typically are your best teams in the country, regardless of whether three of them happen to reside in the same province. We saw that with this Kevin Cooey team for years, playing out of a province where Kevin Martin hailed from, and it wasn't until Kevin went to the Olympics and couldn't play in the Briar that Kevin broke through, went to the Worlds and won it. So you should not be penalized for having a province where you have some great curlers. So Reed trying to utilize that one corner guard that is in play, get Derek to bury around there. Not great, not 15. But whatever process they choose, Mike, back to your comment, is that it will be a competition that is determined fair and square on the ice. It's not you know, one of those situations where Ulsrud won Norway four times and they kept saying, well, we know you won, okay, but okay. we like Peltrolson and, you know, yeah, I know you won, but it's really Peltrolson who's beaten the Canadians and that happens in a lot of places where teams are handpicked and there are processes that continue to change until they get the team that they want out of the country. In Canada, it's all set in stone well in advance. People know how to get into the pre-trials, how to get into the Olympic trials, and you know that whoever wins that day will go. And that's, I think, a really great part of our system. Mark Kennedy coming in with some weight. Is that a guard, I think, doesn't he? Still seems pretty good. Okay. Okay, wait, wait for line. Okay, Derek, just Derek's got to curl, got to curl big. 
Got to go, boys. Keep going, Derek. Don't touch it, Colin. Keep going, Derek. Out, off, Colin, Colin, off. So the two brushers on that side can make the stone curl more. Good, good. And so that's why they didn't want Colin to negate the effect of that at all. And why Reed came out to sweep on that side to try to get some extra finish to that stone. Try this. I just threw that. I just threw that run back. Not really. We don't know anything out there. You got to remember if I just make. You guys like field, that? I think so. Still, what is he gonna do? This is a good chance to end the end. Yeah, I threw this run okay. back. I'll be close. Three quarters is, yeah, yeah, six, three quarters. Trying to make them both go away. No, no, close, no. Yes, yes! No. Yeah. Okay, so you go seven, eight. Oh, less. A little less? Yeah, for sure. This is no longer about yep. getting around that corner guard. It is no longer their own, and so a run back, a dead nut just leaves the Cooey team line three. It is freezing to the stone at the back. It's also changing the shot, trying to find something that will work. Yep, 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 yep. Nice shot. And then he's got to make a good come around and you can this chase way? it. I think so, yeah. Okay. You like that? Well, yeah, I just, it's a little dangerous, but just, I mean, I, for me to jam it there, I'd have to hit. Too thick. Real thick. Right? Yeah, like, I think you're trying to hit a third. Skinny third. Not as easy as I thought. It's a tough shot. Okay. What makes it tougher is that that guard yeah, that is play. out front forces the turn that you have to play. And the angle of the stones, when you pick it, the rock will go towards that one that is the blue one. And there's not a ton of separation. There's that guard that I talked about. If that guard wasn't there and you could play the other turn, it's not a difficult shot. Big weight. Into skip stones now. And the sixth then, the first from Kevin Cooey. I think so. I think there. Yeah. Yeah. Was good in your spot? Yeah. Not that 15 anymore, maybe, but. Uh, Talking about 15 between the two hogs. In the earlier game, it was 13 and a half, 13, 15, eight. By the end of the game, maybe a 14. And we heard Reed talk to Mike at the, at the uh, break and talk about how it's much quicker in this draw than they have seen previously. Four between the hogs. Good. 
He looks the same. It's not even really a line, line shot, shot, right? I mean, he's the one there. But Benny, I mean, Benny just... Benny just drew... Benny got here. There, with here. Okay. I'd say somewhere in just the middle. Just outside edge of button, yeah. Keep it on high side. Time well, that. Yeah. Same. Yep. Okay. This might be a Boy, little three for back four. For the freeze, yeah. Just. Last stone for Kevin Cooey. Reed Crothers has the hammer. Line's good. Well, there. Sweep for back four. Line's good. Line's good. Broom down. Well done. No, 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 no. Never, never. Get over. Kevin Cooey sliding deep and deep enough that yeah, a nose we, hit sure. here by so Reed straight, eh? yep. gives him the Thank two back and draws less. within okay. two. Yeah. It's two ends to go. Easy. I was thinking if this end didn't go well for the Crothers Force and we might see handshakes with them having to play later tonight to get their berths. But this could draw them within two. Last rock. Sixth end. Good. There's your deuce. And Crothers with the nose hit for another two. Scored two in the fourth end as well and has clawed back into this game. 6-4 is our score in our featured match and we're back with the seventh end. In just a moment, you're watching the can Add ins men's classic from Portage on Shaw TV. Marchand won seven games. Eight. I'm sorry, eight games. In that time, he put together a two-game winning streak, got new uniforms, met an Olympic gold medalist, made the front page of Curling Monthly. He explained to his boss what sweeping does and got his butt kicked by a guy with a fake hit. Yes, Alex the Hack Marchand has had quite a year, and it all started with a click. Hey, guys, what's up? Frank forgot to bring the ball. Sorry. So now we need something we can throw and kick that's not too big and slightly oblong. <laughs> what are you guys looking at? The least I can say, I'm naturally talented at football! If you love the game as much as we do, go deep with the Shaw Road to the Great Cup with exclusive interviews, game day features, and more. <laughs> Canadian's Destination Centers. Proud to support our community with 10 destination centers in Manitoba. Reed Crothers was down 5 0 at one point to Kevin Cooey. He has clawed back and is trailing 6 4 now in this B event final. We're playing the seventh end. Winner advances directly to tomorrow's championship round. Loser has to play in the C event finals at 8.30 tonight. We'll have those for you on Shaw Television. Another B event final is going on as I speak. Nicholas Sedin, defending world champion, is tied 3-3, curling 
Charlie Thomas of the Glencoe Curling Club in Calgary. And we have two Sea Event semifinals on the ice as well. Willie Lyburn of Manitoba leads Jeff Hartung 4-3. And it's Craig Brown up 2-1 on Brock Virtue. Well, a bit of an opportunity here for the Carruthers team. Benny Hebert not able to move that stone off the center. Got too much of it. He wound up tapping it back. It's in the house, but he left the center guard. Kevin Cooey will not be the least bit concerned about the stone in the house, other than it may make it tough to blank later. But it, that stopped very fast. That it's still a double seal, though. But you're going to peel. Kevin not able to remove the guard, the guard belonging to, to the Cooey team, but he certainly can remove his own. In an effort to make sure that there's very little that the Carruthers team can work with, asking Ben to remove the stone that he put there on the first one. I didn't know Russ Howard was here. Who, <laughs> who was that? I don't know. I think this turn. Very animated. Either Craig Brown, probably Brock Virtue. I'm thinking he had last rock in that end. Line's good. A little bit. Yep. Well, he scored yeah, one really to tie oh. Craig Brown. 2-2. Two, two. So all that yelling got him a, got him a single. Well, it may have been against four or five, so then maybe it was worth it. Well, for the Carruthers team, there are rocks in play. And when you're down two with two ends left to go and without, that's what you're looking for is anything that you can utilize to go behind to freeze to. Currently line two. And have that guard. Especially if you're rolling away. Easy board. Yep. Wait's good, Ted. Whoa, whoa. Sure we're rolling away. Yep, yep. Easy. Whoa. Mark Easy. Off. Oh, off. Off. No, 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 no. no. Shot, really good. Did not want to stay there because that allowed a freeze, but they did want to stick around. If they have to, they'll take two and have that four point advantage. Wanted to out count that yellow stone in the wings, which they have. Looking over and seeing Steve Laycock's team is now out practicing. Earlier we talked about Brad Jacobs' team throwing. Teams would have been given specific times that they can go and throw. The two A qualifiers, as they've had some time off. Laycock and Brad Jacobs have qualified through the A side. Two more will qualify here. And then another four this evening at 8.30 and we'll be back on the air for that. And we'll have the final for you, championship final at six o'clock tomorrow night. Three draws tomorrow if you want to come down. It's always nice for the players when you're in a building in a big event and there's a crowd there to cheer you on, or even if they're not cheering you on, they're still watching. Portage has always been very good that way. Lots of folks come out to watch. Well, the guard was the trouble rock for Kevin Cooey. It was something that Braden, Braden, sorry, Reed Carruthers' team could use as they watched Braden throw. And so removing that, if he's forced to play stones in the house, he's very comfortable with that. 
but Farid is asking Braden to throw the guard. Really wants some stuff up front, make it tough for the Kui team. Good. Yep. Looking for a guard one more time. Screaming you heard next door brought to you by Jason Gunlickson and <laughs> Willie Livern on one of Jason's famous upweight shots, which he did make to lie three. And they're up four three on Jeff Hartung. As you take a look at Gunner, who's been a Russian for a short period of time, <laughs> been a BC person for a short period of time. Now playing third for Willie. I'd like to ghost write his book. Oh, there would be stories, I am sure. Into skip stones now, seventh end. Guard over curled, and the, the biggest problem with that is that it does make that double a little bit easier for Kevin Cooey. It also slid a little bit closer than I think Reed would like it to be. great example of the kind of weight that he can throw but what happens when he does it doesn't run straight it actually backs up a little bit we've seen him throw a couple today and not producing the results he's looking for they just not only don't move they actually drift back wow yeah yeah he's being safe with it but now he goes out at 100%. what if you go this way then So, I, I so like if he goes at it. Yeah, I can't. You just want to go here? I think so. You look, just hope for a pick. I don't know. Yeah. I think so. I yeah. I hope for a miss. <laughs> or, yeah, maybe a miss, but maybe a pick. One of the two. <laughs> Do it. 
to it. T line's good too, but there's a chance if it goes T line that he might What's play, the play a double, here, Kathy? But... Well, they're playing down Let's to that to stone at the back to lie too. That's their objective, and they know that they'll force Kevin to take one, and then they'll be down three coming home. But maybe you get a bit of a break. For sure, want to lie too when this is done. He's trying to utilize that lonely blue stone at the back. Yep, no, just letting you know. Yeah, okay. I'll give you right on the edge, I think. So looking for full eight foot to take a three point edge coming home. What's that? Oh, sorry. Final stone, Whoa. seventh end. Okay. Line's good. Line's Cooey facing stop. two. It's little tight. No, no line's not. good. Line's good. Fine. T line. T line, Daddy. T line. T line. Perfect, guys. Perfect. Nice throw, bud. There was a bit of concern there, but yeah. no problem. He draws to the button for one and. Leads by three, seven, four after seven ends of play. We're back with the eighth end in just a moment. You're watching the can at ins men's classic from Portage on Shaw TV. labels, leave them be. When the container is empty, it's ready to be recycled. For more recycling tips from Multi-Material Stewardship Manitoba, visit simplyrecycle.ca. Shaw TV presents the Canada Inns Women's Classic live from Portage La Prairie, Manitoba. The women take to the ice for week two of our Canada Inns coverage beginning Saturday at 5 p.m. with their final match on Sunday at 6 p.m. Catch the action at the Canada Inns Women's Classic, live from Portage La Prairie, Manitoba, exclusively on Shaw TV and Shaw Direct, channel 299. Tavern United, a new world sports pub. With a wide selection of sporting events televised at our eight locations in Manitoba. Tavern United, your destination for great sports all the time. Welcome back to the Canad Inns Destination Center in Portage. Our featured match, Kevin Cooey leading Reed Crothers 7-4. Didn't appear as though this game would go the distance early on, but it has materialized that way. A comeback for Reed Crothers. He trails by three. Here in the eighth, the winner advances to tomorrow's championship round. The other B event final on the ice is tied 3-3 between Nicholas Adine and Charlie Thomas of Calgary. Stephen Laycock and Brad Jacobs have already qualified through the A side. So eight rinks will play in the championship round tomorrow. We've talked that the loser of this game will go back on at 8.30, so they've got an hour and 20 from now, so obviously less by the time they come off, and they will play the winner of the Virtue Brown game. That is a deadlock 2-2 game. Craig Brown of the United States and Virtue of Saskatchewan. Last Rock belongs to Craig Brown. 
Willie Lyburn has a 4-3 lead on Jeff Hartung in the other C event semifinal with Last Rock to come here. <laughs> Lyburn has Last Rock. Well, and if the Carruthers team does go on to lose this game, they have an advantage that they did not have in the previous year, and they have recruited Dan Carey, former Canadian men's champion, bronze world medalist from 92 with Vic Peters as their coach. And so Dan is here. And so, you know, one of the things that he will do is talk to them about, you know, his observations during the game and just make sure that they've got a very quick turnaround mindset as they go out to play. He's probably also watched a little bit of that game on sheet three, giving them some feedback on what they can expect. But it is really nice when you come off a game that you lose to qualify. If you do have to go back on quickly that there is somebody else that is leading the pep rally, if you will. And that was a role that Rika Others had to play in previous years without a coach. You're trying to get your team rallied up, and sometimes they need to get you rallied up as a skip. You wear a, you carry a lot of weight in that fourth rock throwing position. And there's a look at sheet five, last stone for Willie Lyburn. He was already lying one, meaning he'd take a two-point lead. I'm not quite sure if I'm they counted sure. two I did there. Not see. But he'd be up by at least a couple through six ends. Stay tuned for our post-game show. We'll put Mike Valente to work. He'll talk to the skips, get their thoughts on the game. And try. Hey, just over, just over. Whoa, 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 just over. That's a lot of curling, you know, back-to-back -back games. So as a coach, what would you... Well, uh, tell your troops just in terms of, uh, you know, staying hydrated and uh, well, all of everything, those things, focus. They certainly know that it's really important, you know, to have something to eat and what kinds of food that you would eat and, and the hydration thing. You know, I think that, you know, Dan will be talking about we early on had an opportunity, but his, his rock pick. There's nothing that you can do about that. That is part of our sport. It's a frustrating part. There is no doubt about it as we see the double clean. But it, it is just one of those things. And so it is about looking ahead, and that's enough to end that game. And so Kevin Cooey advances. All right, so our featured match, our B event final, is in the books. Kevin Cooey defeats Reed Crothers, avenging uh, an earlier loss uh, yesterday in the A event games. And so Cooey becomes the third qualifier here in Portage. And Reed's rink will have to battle it, battle it out tonight in the C event finals. We're back with much more curling, and we'll hear from the skips when we return. You're watching the can Ad Inns Men's Classic from Portage on Shaw TV. On Shaw. Tune in Friday, October 23rd when the high flying UBC Thunderbirds touch down in Saskatoon for a battle with the Saskatchewan Huskies. Crown Produce, Canada West Football, only on Shaw. Shaw TV wants to send two deserving recipients to the 103rd Grey Cup. Do you know a super fan, a football player doing great work in their community, or perhaps a teacher who goes above and beyond for their students? Tell us why this person deserves a pair of tickets to the Grey Cup, and they will be entered to win tickets to the biggest CFL game of the year. Canadian's Destination Centers. Proud to support our community with 10 destination centers in Manitoba. 
Welcome back to Portage. Kevin Cooey and his rink have qualified for tomorrow's championship round here in Portage, a 7-4 victory over Reed Crothers. Kathy, just a quick thought on what you saw today. Oh, I thought Kevin's team looked very strong, remembering that the deuce that Reed did get in that sixth end to draw within two was as a result of Kevin Cooey's pick. And so otherwise, I thought that they played very solid. He opened a 5-0 lead and won 7-4. Let's go downstairs. Mike Valente is standing by with him right now. Thank you very much. We're with the winning skip, Kevin Cooey. Take us through the final th few ends there. It was quite interesting. Yeah, it got a little closer than uh, than we liked. We had a few misses and uh, just kind of one uh, little mistake. But, uh, you know, a win's a win, and we're through to through to Monday. And this is a real, real tough spiel, one of the toughest of the year. So uh, hopefully we can play good tomorrow. What does this do for you and your team's confidence? It's a big win. Yeah, it's good. I mean, Reed's, Reed's a great team. They've had a great year, and uh, that might be actually the first time we beat them this year. So, you know, it's a good confidence builder for sure. Thanks, Kevin. Congratulations. And that will do it for our coverage for now. We'll be back in about an hour and 10 minutes on Shaw TV. 8.30, we'll be back on the air, so stay tuned to Shaw TV. This is the 2015 Canadiens Men's Classic from Portage La Prairie.